Now, we know over the next couple of days, it is going to be absolutely insane for us as fans from the outside. But think about it as players, because it's a lot of guys that's been working their entire lives to get to this point to try to hopefully maybe make it onto a 53 man roster. And hey, some will achieve their dreams. Some will reach that milestone. And unfortunately, others, they won't. And for some, they'll get another opportunity somewhere else. But for some, that'll be a wrap. And football, the dream of playing in the NFL, it'll be done. Um, so there's a lot of transactions that are going to be made, but it's a lot of hearts that are going to be broken, just shattered in the pieces because this is the end of the line for a lot of people. And it happens every single year. And it just reminds us of how tough of, of a business football is. But when you look at the Baltimore Ravens specifically, they, of course, are one of the 32 teams that go through this annually. But for them this year, uh, they have some positions where it's just, oof, it's tough to predict who's going to make it, who's not. And probably one of those toughest positions is cornerback. Cornerback. Obviously, you got a couple of guys that are locks. Marlon Humphrey, of course. Rocky Scene, of course. But really, outside of those guys, this is a big toss-up. Because you got a couple of rookies that they drafted last year. You don't know the status of them. You got some guys that they signed this year. A lot of guys that they signed this year. And you just don't know what's going to happen. But somebody who's been on this team for the past couple of years, he's been hanging around but just hasn't quite established a role, is Ardarius Washington. And Ardarius Washington, in this preseason, he has continued to show why he needs to make this roster. I'll, and I would honestly be shocked. I would be surprised if he does not make the roster. I really would. Because he has shown like, hey, what, what is he like, 5'9"? He's a smaller guy, but he plays big. And it's like he got so much instinct. He got smarts. He got the playmaking ability. It's, it's all there. And he shows it to you when he's on the field. And my thing is, with Ardarius Washington, he showed it to us in the preseason. But with Ardarius Washington, I, um, I'm interested to see him play around more starters. Because I feel like the quality of his play would improve that much more if the quality of everybody around, everybody around him, their play improved that much more. And not to say that the, the, the quality of the people that was in the preseason was bad. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying that I, I, I would love to see him as that slot. I mean, I feel like he pretty much got the role. I feel like it should be his, that, that, that nickel corner, that slot corner. I think there would be a little mix with uh, him and Kyle Hamilton and whatnot. Even though they may have Kyle Hamilton become more of a traditional safety, we'll see. We'll see how things go. But uh, Darius Washington, he needs to make this team. Now, if you want to be educated more on Ardarius Washington, you want to be shown like, wow, what, what, what is it that he can really do? How good can he be? Well, my guy Huddle It Up Films, and I'm going to put the link to his video uh, in the description. He cut up some Ardarius Washington film. And y'all, please check that out because you will love what you see. And it'll make you that much more excited for what the future holds for Ardarius Washington. So... Over these next couple of days, Baltimore Ravens, I'm letting you know right now, Ardarius Washington better be on the 53. Now, one quick update before we get into this rest of this video. Uh, Shamar Bridges. Yes, Shamar Bridges was waived a couple of days ago, uh, and that started the Ravens trimming from 90 men to 53 men. So they got a lot more moves to make, um, and it's going to be very busy. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on. We will keep you updated with literally every single thing that these Baltimore Ravens do. It's going to be a lot. I'm bracing you right now, but we will let you know every single move that they make, everybody who they cut, release, all that good stuff. Uh, and it's going to continue even after Tuesday's deadline of 4 p.m. Eastern time because they're going to be bringing guys back. They're going to be doing their, their infamous handshake deals where it's like, hey, all right, we're going to cut you, but just stick around. Don't go nowhere. We're going to sign you back in a couple of days because we just got to move some people around on the roster and whatnot. So y'all just be on the lookout for that. But 
while we're here, you know what? Let's go over some questions from subscribers. So first question came from my guy, Oreo Cookie, who actually sent this this morning. And he said, though, so this topic was brought up by Nitro, but I noticed it as well. Have you noticed how Mark Andrews seems very different? I like to think that he is just locked in, but if he was mad with the team, it would sort of make sense. So what do you think? Mm, that's a really good question. And I could see if Mark Andrews felt some sort of way. Why? Because Mark Andrews is used to being the main event. He's used to being the showstopper. He's used to being the guy when it comes to Ravens passing offense he's used to being the focal point of it so much has gone through Mark Andrews Mark Andrews has been that guy he's been Lamar's guy he's been Lamar's main target his top target and all that good stuff uh, but now it seems as if maybe just maybe Mark Andrews may feel a little threatened and for us as fans we're looking at like hey that's great for the Baltimore Ravens as a whole that's great because people they could focus on Mark Andrews but you got so many other people around them and it's a great thing for us, but Mark Andrews may be looking at it like, hold up, y'all about to take off of my plate. Now, he has gotten his bread already, and I'm sure he's going to get plenty more in the future. But, hey, he may be looking at it like, wow, all these guys around me, like, how's that going to impact me? And I think it will. And, and this, again, it's a good thing overall for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, and for Mark Andrews, it can help him too. Because if there's less attention being put on Mark Andrews, then that'll allow him to get in one more one-on-one -on -one matchups. And there's going to be some cases where Mark Andrews is wide open. It's going to happen. Uh, it may come far and few, but it will happen. So this is a good thing for the team. Individual stats, I think Mark Andrews' stats, they, they I mean, from two years ago to last year, they did take a significant dip. Um, so I think they may sort of stay around the same maybe where they were at last year. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. And I think with Mark Andrews, it's just I think it's just him feel, feeling a bit threatened. Um, him feeling like, man, like things have been going good for me here. Not that they're going to go bad, but I think they could be different. I, saw, I think it, it could sort of be like a, a J.K. Dobbins type of thing. Uh, where with J.K. Dobbins, uh, what I've been saying about him, what my expectations for this offense, I think his opportunities, not necessarily going to be far and few, but it's going to be some shared opportunities. Like with J.K. Dobbins, shared opportunities with the other running backs. And Mark Andrews, shared opportunities with the other pass catchers. And a lot of shared opportunities with those pass catchers. Um, and of course, there are going to be some games where he's going off there, but there are going to be some games where somebody else may be going off. So he may not be getting his as much as he's used to. And again, for team... That's fine, but for individual, it could be like, ooh, okay. Um, so he just had to make the most of it. So we, we won't know till we know. We'll see how this offense goes, but let's just hope it all works out. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, coaching has been very questionable this preseason. With that being said, the past couple of years, I think we have all noticed bad decisions being made, especially from the head coach. Ravens have made changes in both coordination positions, but... Have Ravens really cured the problem? We know Harbs has been solid most years. If Ravens don't make AFC Championship this season, do you think Ravens will make a change at head coach? No negative questions, just realistic expectations. Thanks for staying positive. You help more than you know. Hashtag team keep it clean. Hashtag eight, number eight to number one. Yes, yes, sir. Um, if they don't make it, no, John Harbaugh is safe. He, he's safe. He, you know, he, he's, he's in with this Ravens organization. I mean, he's been here since 2008. He, I, I don't think he would ever get fired. Um, but I do think that over the next couple of years, I think that he could end up retiring. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think the only way that John Harbaugh goes out uh, would be on his own terms. But um, yeah, like you mentioned, there, there have been changes, big changes with the coordinator positions over these past couple of years. Last year, Mike McDonald got brought in. This year, uh, Todd Munkin got brought in. Uh, but yeah, uh, so so much. So much of everything uh, is on John Harbaugh. So let's hope that this year uh, they, they can correct a lot of stuff uh, and they can really make the best decisions for this football team just to be a winning football team, a smart football team, uh, and a team that they, they coach this team to a lot of success. Wide receiver one. Next question came from my guy Dylan. He said, Angry when the team keep it clean. It's been a while, but I do hope the family and yourself are doing well, as well as the rest of the team. Happy to see your channel finding continued success and keep it up. Hey, appreciate that, Dylan. He said, There's been a lot of talk about our improved weapons this offseason, and honestly, the more I think about it, it's set up for Bateman with expectation to health, uh, considering his past with us to be that guy. Hey, 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 you, hey, you, you on the same page as me. We on the same page, baby. I appreciate it, Dylan. 
Uh, but anyway, he said, we all know Andrews is that dude. We know OBJ can potentially be, even though he isn't in his prime. And obviously, we don't need to talk about Zay because everyone else is talking about him for us. And don't forget, Duvernay can make plays as well for us like he showed early last year. The reason I say this is because we've seen Bateman when healthy do everything, be a chain mover, make deep plays, be reliable on routes. Sure, I'm biased, but I can't look past that route against the Dolphins where he gave Howard that work and outran everyone else for the score. Not just any receiver can do that. That's true. I uh, just wanted to see what you're thinking. Who do you believe will be our leading receiver this year? All the best, and let's get the regular season started already. I mean, hey, we got less than two weeks. That's crazy. But, yeah, hey, I'm right there with you. I've been saying the exact same thing, that I do believe that Bateman, this, this is his year. This is his time to be that wide receiver one. I mean, Lamar came out and said it in the press a couple weeks ago. Um, but yeah, it's it's looking like it's, it's set up nice for Bateman. And the same thing we were talking about with Andrews, man, with how there will be less attention. You, there's less attention that you can put on one person um, based off of everybody else because of everybody else that's around him with Bateman like I expect him to be on that field a lot I think with OBJ he'll be on the field a lot but I think they're gonna take him off sometimes I think they're gonna give him like rest breaks and stuff and some little time off here and there uh, but I think Bateman he'll be out there a lot I think he'll be out there more than Odell Beckham Jr. Um, so he's gonna have all the, all the chance in the world to really show it um, especially because this is such a big year for him too. Next question came from my guy Kevin B. He said, "Some don't remember Anthony Mitchell." Hello, and great, and I hope all is well, my friends. And some don't remember Anthony Mitchell. Well, he's Keaton Mitchell's dad, and he was a big part of the Ravens' first Super Bowl win. I think the game was tied 10-10, and the Ravens got maybe their second field goal block, and Anthony Mitchell caught it and ran about 90 yards for the touchdown, and that's what won the game against the Titans in the playoffs. They only gave up 23 total points. That playoff season from playoffs and super bowl against denver titans raiders and giants that is insane still when you think about it um and that's special man that's that's special and that, that's cool to see i know there's been some other like uh some players that have been related to former players from the raven like like john harbaugh john harbaugh his brother jim played quarterback for the ravens um there's orlando brown jr of course his dad uh was on the offensive line too zeus um who, I, I know there's more. It is slipping my mind right now. I, but I, I know for sure that there's more. But it's always cool to see that. So let's hope that Keaton Mitchell can do just like his dad and not only make the team, but make plays for the team as well. And the last question or observation came from my guy, David, who's a team keep it clean patron. He's been one for six months, so I appreciate it, David. He said, uh, Aang Graven, can't wait to see your coverage of the Ravens this season. Hey, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. He said, now, not really a question, but... I'm currently watching a preseason game, uh, and I understand that Johnson threw a duck, but James Prochet's lack of ability to catch the ball, I think, will be the reason he gets cut probably this week. I think the only way he would make the roster is through a punt return or kick return roll, but honestly, I think he gets beat out by Keaton Mitchell. I'm just curious, what do you think about that? Um, yeah, for James Prochet, I think it's unfortunately over. Uh, I, I, I do think that they'll, I think they'll injury stash wave him. I mean, they'll, I think they'll injury stash him. And then possibly wave him at a later time, but I just, I, I don't, I think there's no way at this point that James Prochet makes the roster. Um, and he's, it's tough because like we talked about earlier, like this is a lot of heartbreak for for, for players individually. But what makes it even tougher is that this is such a tough job. It's such a tough job to be in. It's such a tough position to be in. Um, just one percent of people make it to the NFL. Uh, but with James Prochet, it's like. He he's having some, just going through it at his job, but he's going through it outside his job, too. So he could be possibly still grieving. I'm, I'm not sure how he's feeling right now because I don't know him personally at all. But that's a big possibility that he's still still dealing with that outside his job. And then he got to deal with this inside the job and, and they could impact each other because y'all know stress is real. So what I'm hoping for James Prochet, um, first and foremost, is that his mentals are, are good and they can be good. Um, that's a tough ask right now because, again, like your job is like over the next what is I'm recording this at 846 a.m. So over the next day and a half, um, you, that's when you'll find out what the status of your job is. And you, you just don't know right now. But from everything that you have put out there this preseason, it's looking rough. And if we know it's looking rough, he knows it's looking rough. So it's it's really scary. It's, when you really sit down and think about it, it's really, really scary, man. Um, so, but yeah, I just, I don't see him making this roster at all.